Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. This from Post Wrestling. Missy Hyatt is disclosed. She had her own incident involving Vince McMahon several decades ago during her brief stint with the WWF. Hyatt did a pair of interviews over the weekend with Wrestling Shoot Interviews and Cafe de Rene, describing McMahon attempting to kiss her in a hotel room in 1987. She was brought in for vignettes, Missy's Manor, which they filmed at various tapings, but never made it to television. I had noted the segments were, quote, so horrible and weren't a good fit for her character. This was when WWE was attempting to fill the void left by Piper's Pit, following Roddy Piper rip- uh, wrapping up at that year's WrestleMania. I've actually been watching a lot of those 86 WWF Challenge shows. And boy, did they like their talk shows back then. I can't tell you how many of these snake pits I've seen with Jake the Snake, which if you've never seen them, they're just like, they're so wacky. It's like Jake interviews some baby face, and the baby face comes out, and Jake tries to make some snide remark, and the baby face always one-ups him. And then they get to the final one. These segments are like, they're, they're like two minutes long. And then Jake has one final, and he thinks he's got him. And then the babyface has some zinger. And then Jake goes, ah! He gets all angry, and the babyface confidently walks off. It's like, this is so different from so much you see nowadays. Where, like, the heels, they want to be cool, the cool heels. Jake was a guy who, he was not cool. And he did not, I mean, he sold for these baby faces. He made them look great. But anyway... She claimed that a night in Las Vegas after taping the first segment of Missy's Manor went out to dinner with McMahon and a large group of people. In her 2001 book, she noted Dick Ebersol was among them and also Gene Okerlin. Later that night, she said I had to push Vince out of my hotel room as he was trying to stick his tongue in my mouth. Noted she was engaged at the time to Eddie Gilbert. Wasn't going to cheat on her partner. In her book, she did not disclose the incident in the hotel room but was complimentary of McMahon during her brief tenure. The segments were March 21st in Vegas, March 22nd in Phoenix, April 23rd in Worcester, according to History of WWE. She had turned it down McMahon's advance, was offered a smaller role as a Federette. Guys remember the Federettes? Yeah. Hyatt was not interested in that role and left. She stated she had spoken. How many people listening right now remember the fact? I'll tell. I'll talk about them in a minute. Right. Stated she had spoken to the lawyer of Janelle Grant, offered to be a witness to describe Vince's behavior. This would have been uh, eight months after the allegations by Rita Chatterton. Yeah, the Federettes. I mean, listen. I've been watching all the stuff from that era, but I've been watching all of the WWF Challenge shows, and literally. You would see a Federette for two seconds during a one-hour show. They would just, like, be coming back from commercial, and there'd be some woman, and they'd say, It's one of the Federettes! And then, like, that was it. They were That was the role. Ringside valets. Yeah. To take things to and from the locker room. Yep. So, that's the latest. More on post-wrestling, if you want to check it out. But add uh, Missy Hyatt to the list. Then we've got all of this going on in TNA, a completely different set of unfortunate circumstances. Lou D'Angeli no longer with the company. The former sign guy Dudley, he'd been vice president of marketing since 2002. He'd been uh, WWE's director of marketing, 2006 to 2010. Worked for Cirque du Soleil in the meantime. His assistant also gone. So... Currently, they have no marketing team, they have no live event team, and they have nothing booked after the first week of August. Everyone, Dave says, is kind of waiting. They know something's up, but they don't know exactly what. Scott Demore was let go, raised a lot of eyebrows. Everything we have heard is Anthem is trying to spend less. Think the situation was that whatever the losses were, they were more than Anthem was happy with to keep the number one rated show that they have. So, Artie Evans resigned. He had been part of Creative since 2019. David Sahadi resigned, or he's gone. I actually don't know what happened, but uh, he let was go. he was he was let go. Yeah, 
He'd been there since like 2004. He'd been there for like 20 years. Sometimes the only good thing on the entire broadcast were his video packages. Yeah, he did those video packages with the deep-voiced guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the video packages were great. But yeah, this place is being gutted right now. So we shall see. Demore offered to buy the place and was turned down. So I guess at some point we'll find out if... Was he turned down because they weren't interested in selling, or were they? was he turned down because they didn't think that was the right price if they end up selling? Or they want another suitor, possibly. You know, another suitor that has sold off all of its TV rights for its current products and could use maybe another group that could be NXT, but not NXT. It can be TNA, and they can have tiers to NXT and TNA. I you know I don't I don't know if that's a long shot or not that WWE would have interest but if it is hemorrhaging money which it seems like it is and there was that little hope spot that Dave talked about towards the end of last year where it seemed like they were actually gaining some momentum and some followers again and that obviously was either a fleeting moment or numbers were wrong or something because they have not been able to keep it up they've had trouble drawing in Las Vegas where they put a lot of their eggs so you know, if they're willing to ditch this and WWE all of a sudden now has on YouTube TV, you know, they were able to continue that carriage deal through Anthem and they're able to actually, again, just expand their portfolio in a very unique way by, of all things, buying TNA. I mean, who knows? It's possible. I've heard far more people talking about the possibility of Tony buying TNA because at the end of the day, Let's think about all these things that That's WWE... That's insane, Brian. Well, hey, he bought Ring of Honor. I don't know what they would sell TNA for. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Yeah. Drive up the price on them. Here's the deal. What uh, What did WWE... Remember when they were in that, that, uh, that we're going to buy all these promotions, etc.? Yeah. Well, they wanted the video library mm-hmm. for WWE Network. Yeah. Now they're on Peacock. Yeah. What's the last thing they added to Peacock? Nothing. It's been a while. Yeah. They don't and add anything knows, to Peacock anymore. Who knows when it, the thing moves if they're going to bring anything with it, Brian. But that's why I'm wondering on do they look at it since it's already got an established show as a basically a fourth brand you can put on some something smaller than CW or something less impactful where it just you're doing it literally to open up another revenue stream and to basically – take another avenue away possibly from AEW. Now, I think they're going to stay with WBD. I think Tony really wants that. And I think it's beneficial for WBD if AEW stays with them. But with that said, WWE goes and goes, we're going to put this on the cheap on Paramount just to take away that option or something like that. I mean, crazier things have happened. Well, we'll see. I don't know what they'd... Listen, I'm not even getting more WWF challenges. I can't even get that. You think I'm going to get impact? I want Florida. I want Florida. Give me Florida. Well, they're adding nothing. Please. And I wouldn't be surprised if the things went on, they just started taking things off of Peacock. Well, just look. Just last week, the final contract with an indie ran out as WXW got pulled off, so there's no more progress. I don't know. I would assume Evolve is not on there anymore. They're not bothering with any of that stuff anymore because what's been proven is, unfortunately, for people like me that like history and for people out there that wanted something different like that stuff on the site, it just doesn't put enough numbers in. It's all about premium live events. And again, if you add TNA to that, I'm not saying that it would be a great benefit, but I'm I'm sure they would figure out a way to trump it up during uh, press releases and trying to sell the thing. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, 
As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.